what's up everybody welcome back to the channel you can see i'm getting set up here to uh install this uh 034 motorsport rear sway bar on my a6 this one is a uh, 25.4 solid steel millimeter and it's solid steel 25.4 millimeter solid steel and it's it's pretty heavy as far as uh sway bar because a lot of them they make them hollow but they make the uh diameter thicker to give some uh, torsional rigidity and uh this one is just going to help reduce the understeer on this car i don't know if, if if you guys saw the video that i was doing a race against the uh, cadillac cts on the way back uh we were coming under the bridge and there's a turn there man and i oversteered i mean sorry i understeered a lot and that's one of the things i noticed about this car but most of the uh volkswagen audi group cars have understeer most people upgrade the rear sway bar so i'm going to be doing that here and uh let's see man they 034 man they're they're making nice quality hard look, look how thick how thick the uh brackets are and then they put a zerk fitting on there so you could grease them later. You don't have to take them off to grease them later. You just get a grease gun, hook it up to that, you know, because sometimes these will squeak later. I've never really had it happen, but if it does, I just get the uh, grease gun, snap it on there. It'll put some grease in and stop the squeaking. I didn't get the uh, end links. I'll get the uh, end links later and that'll help with uh, faster response from the sway bar too but i'll get those later the factory ones are just plastic with a rubber bushing the uh, 034 end links are are uh i think they might be a, a solid aluminum instead of plastic but they have uh spherical bearings in them so you don't have all that sway and everything from the from the uh from the rubber and everything so it'll make it respond faster and more precise so i'll probably get those too later but uh, anyway, let me get started with this install. You can see we got rain and everything, and it's getting kind of late. So I just want to get this installed today before it rains. So let me get started, and I'll get right back with you guys. All right, you guys, I got the car up. Looking at this, uh, I might be able to get this out without having to drop the uh, exhaust, hopefully. But it's pretty thin, but it's the... Uh, this will still be on in the end link, so I might have to maybe drop the exhaust. But I think I can probably get it out without having to do all of that. Hopefully, these are these are going to take a 10 millimeter triple square, and then I'll loosen that because I have to put these end links on the other bar. So I'm gonna take the whole thing off. This is a 16 millimeter socket for that. So. Let me uh, start loosening this and I'll get back right back with you guys if I can get this out without uh, dropping the exhaust. All right, you guys, uh, I already got the bracket bolts out and uh, I had to stop because my battery died on this. So <laughs> I had to put those on the charger, but I got this one. Help make things faster. But uh, I had to get in here to get the bracket bolts out with just a, a regular ratchet because of the tight space right here against the exhaust. And those actually came out pretty hard because you can see they got rust on them. So I actually had to start ratcheting them out. But uh, let me get this out and then hopefully I won't have to drop the exhaust. Sorry, it's binding on something. 
Oh, it's looking in right there. Let me set you guys on a tripod. Let you guys in the back. Uh, it was getting caught up right here. And you could probably force it out, but you know, if you are, uh, if you remove these and maybe the end links, you can get the whole bar out. But it's just so much easier just to uh, take a, a flathead, push this bushing back on the exhaust, and it'll come down. And actually, I just did one side. I didn't do the other side in the bar. You can see. What Thumbs up, man. And that's it. But uh, let's compare this to the other bar. Yeah, this one is real light. So, see right there. You can see how much bigger the 034 bar is. All right, let me uh, get the uh, end links off of this and onto here, and I'm going to get right back with you guys. All right, you guys, I'm back. You uh, can see it got laid. It's actually started sprinkling right now. But I got the whole thing installed. Uh, I didn't, you know, get to film the whole install because, uh, like I said, it got. I, I was doing this after work, and it got dark quick. And there was supposed to be rain coming. It's actually coming in now. But uh, got everything in, went in pretty simple. The only thing is uh, they give you this one small tube of uh, silicone grease and it's barely enough to do the inside the bushing. So there's none left to do the outside. So I just put some uh, some grease that I had on the back of some, some, some uh, synthetic uh, bearing grease that I had on the uh, outer side of the bushing. And then uh, these are uh, the bracket bolts are what they are. Let me see. I wrote it down. 28 Newton meters. So that's equivalent to 20.6 foot pounds. And the end link bolts are 40 Newton meters, which is equivalent to 29.5 foot pounds. So I torqued all those and see everything's in there it's that side. so pretty straightforward install you know just uh, undo everything you could let one side down just take it out from there I poured some I sprayed some uh, silicone grease in there make it come out easier and pop right back in I just let one side down but you can let probably get away with uh, letting both sides down if you want to but you can get away with doing one side but uh anyway uh let me let this car down we'll take it out for a test drive right, you guys i'm out here doing a little test run it's already failed just moving the uh steering wheel back and forth at the sway bars you know doing what it's supposed to do. It feels a lot more uh, rigid. I'm not going to be doing nothing crazy, of course, because uh, it's actually raining. But there's an off-ramp where I'll be doing a left and a right turn. I'll be able to kind of feel, you know, what the car is doing. Because the biggest thing with this car before with the stock sway bar was, uh, of course, understeer. But body roll also and right now I could already feel just turning the wheel a little bit like that that there's a, a lot of body roll came out of it because the car is responding quicker too and you could just feel it and then I don't have sports seats either so when I was in that in that turn when I was going up against the uh, the Cadillac CT4 man I was damn near sliding out of my seat <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna get up here to the uh, off ramp and I'll get right back with you guys. All right, this is it right here, y'all. Like I said, I'm not gonna do nothing crazy because it's in the rain. <laughs> Thank you. 
yeah just when I did that turn just now I could feel because you know this is where I come home every day so the car wanted to you know wants to turn more and that's what you want because you know otherwise you're kind of fighting then on top of that there's way less body roll now so I'm not like sliding around in my seat like I usually would uh, one of the only things is uh, not nothing bad it's just that uh, I didn't see on their website because this this sway bar is adjustable but I didn't see on their website what the uh, torsional rigid is for both the settings because there's uh, two holes and you put the sway bar link in the front to make the bar softer and put it in the rear to make it harder and I've got it in the rear hole but I didn't see you know I, I read over it again kind of skimmed over everything but I didn't see anywhere in there where they were saying what the uh, torsional rigidity was but so far I mean the car feels good uh, I do have the uh, front 034 Motorsport uh, control arms, but I need to get the upper control arms. So that's why part of why I haven't installed or installed them yet. And I want to make sure that I was going to do everything at the same time. But I might just go ahead and install the uh, the control arms that I have for now, and then you know, because I think I think they weren't in stock the last time I looked. And then I saw that some people get the track version. So I'm going to look into that because I want to get the right ones the first time. Because they have, they're both the same, but one has a, a sport bushing, which is softer for street. And then one has a, a one of the upper uh, adjustable control arms has a track bushing, which is harder. And it seems like a lot of people we're going for that one. So I'm gonna talk to uh, old 34 about that. And I'm like, maybe I'll go with the upper track ones. Maybe those are just as good for street with the sport lower uh, bushing. And then uh, ECS makes uh, this billet. Uh, I forget what it's called, but it's, it replaces the, uh, the inner lower control arm bushing with this billet uh, this billet insert that they have with the spherical bearing in it and uh, some people ran that and they said you do get a little bit of NVH but that would like improve uh, handling a lot but when I looked on their site I was reading the reviews it was saying that uh, people were running that one and they were saying it was okay for street so that might be something I might do also. Uh, other than that, y'all, uh, the some things I got coming up are uh, I ordered the uh, AP uh, the AP uh, cooling ports for the supercharger because the uh, stock uh, ports on one side. I, I was real surprised, man. You guys will probably see this in another video that I'm going to do probably when I get the ports I think it'd probably be here next week or something but um, one side man it's it's uh, smaller but that's not the only issue the issue is is that the uh, distribution port that goes to all four one side is they're closer to the uh, driver's side intercooler so like if you blow through it it's like all the air is going to those and there's hardly any coming out the other side but of course that might be different when you got fluid and it's under pressure but you could just tell uh there's a lot of improvement there so i'm gonna be ordering some hoses and try to get those up uh, you know i probably order like a t fitting to to move the uh move them around or i might just run the hoses all the way down and maybe just run them another way but that's going to improve uh improve uh coolant flow a lot which should help with cooling too especially with the cwa 150 that i have running and another note on the cwa 150 uh the guy finally finalized the uh 
the the uh, the final version of the harness, so I should be getting that next week also. Because right now, I, like I said, I, I pulled the the middle PWM, so it's running a hundred percent. So, being that I just what I just found when I took the uh, other supercharger part that I'm going to port, and I kind of got to see what some people are talking about. I was like, man, you know. So I'm probably gonna put the PWM back in until I get the uh, the AP uh, cooling ports, and so the whole system be flowing a lot better. But uh, thanks guys for watching. Uh, one more thing, O three four did a video about their rear sway bar. So if I remember by the time this video up, I'll put it in a link. So look in the link. And they'll go into more detail about what the sway bar is doing for the C7 chases. It's some real good information. So look for that. But uh, other than that, uh, leave a like, comment, subscribe, and share. I'll see you guys in the next video. I got, got some uh, one thing coming up is I'm going to be painting the uh, brake calipers. And I did something special with the... Uh, with the little plate that goes in the middle and I'm going to be doing something with the badging on the car so be on the lookout for that and I got you know of course I have to install the uh, new speed stainless steel brake lines and do a flush so be looking out for that and I'll see you guys in the next video thanks for watching